in my life. I don't know if it's Tuesday or Friday. And your sweetness made me like this beautiful little cute thing. Today is a Sarah and I's one year friend anniversary. It's Tuesday. Happy it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Shout out, Chum Bats. Welcome back to Jeff Lewis Obsessed, where we recap Jeff Lewis Live every weeknight at six o'clock California time. I'm Sarah in, Ke uh, where am I at? I'm Sarah in Texas. <laughs> I'm Kelly in California. Hi, guys. So one year ago tonight, um, it was a Monday instead of a Tuesday, November 15th, 2021. Yeah. Jeff had his very last show that he's had so far uh, at a Burbank at Flappers. And um, I was coming by myself. I didn't know anyone enough, anyone that loves Jeff Lewis enough right. to fly last minute with me to go to his show. And um, who's calling us freaks? Oh, is that a nice freak? I mean, I'm I hoping think... it's a good freak. Let's hope it's a good freak, <laughs> Tina. And, um, and Cheryl from Van Nuys reached out to me on Facebook because I really wasn't on Instagram back then no. much. Mm. And um, she was like, we'll have lunch. I'll get some other people together. And I think through the Facebook fan group is how we all, and we had drinks, right? Before the yes. For, I remember you um, reached out to me and you said, oh, hey, um, this uh, Cheryl is going to host like a, a pregame or whatever. And I was yeah. like, awesome. And I only knew you because you had called into the show and I fell in love with you because you said you were a mom and you have five little fuckers at home. I was like, oh, that's, I don't know who this woman is, but she's my person. <laughs> it was love at first radio listen, huh? <laughs> it was. And then I just knew you'd be cool. And so, yeah, then we ended up being able to get together to have a couple drinks or whatever. I can't remember. And then we walked over to Flappers. It was awesome. It smelled like poop, but we, we fell in love. So true. Sewer. And like Jay Leno opened. It was standing right next to us. And now he's recovering from a really bad burn. It I, sounds like he's going to be okay. I've been trying to check up on him. It sounds like it's on his face, though. Yeah. But a friend saved his life. Like a gasoline blew up. That's very scary. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's got a lot of chin. <laughs> it's got Sorry. a lot of face. He's got a lot of face. A lot of Way to estate. bring us down, Kelly. Way to bring it right. down. <laughs> Oh but my anyway, God. so so you... today I made a real um, or a picture collage of very few pictures of us. We do not, when we get together, yeah. we do not take a lot of pictures of just we me don't. and you. Exactly. Yeah. We're usually yeah. taking pictures of other people or taking a shot for someone. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's get, were you saying something? I was going to say, I have you I don't know if you have this in your notes but I wanted to talk about sounding oh I did not look it up I oh, didn't I google it. it I forgot to but I let's let's it. talk so today was Liz Rome and Doug this might have been my favorite Liz Rome episode she just got in her groove and was like I love when she was teasing him about like are y'all my friends or y'all just assholes yes. you know what I mean? like I thought that was funny she has, I, I always like when she's on, I don't think she's like the most quote unquote popular person, but yeah, I still think she's funny. I love her and Doug's relationship. Camille yes. and I were talking about that earlier and she kind of sasses Jeff back. So I think that's yes. what it's been. Yeah, for sure. Um, and instead of her acting like, um, you know, everything's hunky dory with her Mary, what's her husband's name? Is it Peter? I think he is Peter. <sighs> I don't remember, but Peter, I think is Heather's husband too. I think, I think, I think it's Peter. I don't know why I think that. Um, but she always says never been happier. Uh, she sounded a little more like a normal married person today. Like, ah, he's gone. I'm good. Let's go out, Doug. Let's go out next week, Jeff. Five engagements. Five I know. This is, the, this is the only marriage and it's been what, less than a year? And she's already kind of eh, never been well, happier out the window. <laughs> from what I understand, she has several relationships with which a lot of people do but it happened during the pandemic so they always are like I hear a lot of criticism for uh, relationships during the pandemic that they don't last but oh but I'm not saying that's gonna happen with them I'm yeah. just saying that I know that you know when the so pandemic... was she never married to her daughter's father because no, she definitely has like so. a teenage daughter and but I she think does. she's like living with the dad more right isn't she that kind of a drama before. thing going on 
there was some custody issues going on, but I think that her and Liz repaired their relationship. In fact, she told a really scary story about her daughter. Do you remember about the internet thingy? Yeah. Internet predator and yeah. weirdness. Yeah, that was scary. Um, okay, sounding. Do you want to start off with that? I'd never heard of it. Had you? Well, I've heard. First of all, let me just say this. I can't believe I'm going to say this. <laughs> it's the, just us, Kelly. It's just me and you. Okay. The like three viewers. <laughs> the, the tip of a man's penis, like just the, like, you know. I'm the mushroomy like, oh. part? No. The, the soft? Eye. Oh, the eyeball. Yeah. The hole. The hole scares me. I Every time I've ever been around that, that I'm just like, oh. <laughs> anyway. I'm fascinated by it. I think it's beautiful because that's the part that's real smooth. That I don't hole. know. I, the hole, the actual penis hole. Yeah, but all around that part is real smooth. I love Yeah, that it. part's fine. I'm just saying, like, I'm afraid, like, something's going to come out of there. Like oh, my God. Well, something is going to no, come I know, out. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> if you I'm... do it right, Kelly, something definitely comes out. <laughs> anyway, so sounding. Kelly's a virgin, up. everyone. <laughs> I am a virgin. <laughs> It just looks like something's going to come out that you don't know. I know it comes out pee pee and ejaculation. I'm just saying, okay. like, it's like a, a, a little hole where someone's hiding. So you think a 90-inch jump roof is going to pop out at you? Oh, God. I don't understand that at How all. How did he siphon that up there? Like, you know a rope? You know when you're trying to get a needle, like a thread through a needle, and it's like you got to spit on it and get it, whatever? You, you can't spit on it, and you can't tuck it into your penis. Like... What are these people thinking? I love when Jeff was like, hey, can we just keep things out of our orifices? That should be a sound bite. Like, just keep things out of your penis. Well, first of all, 90 inches. And I'm... your assholes. I thought gay men usually do it in their asshole. <sighs> they stick a lot of stuff at the asshole because it's easier. 60 inches is five feet. So that must have been eight feet of something up your penis anyway so 90 sounding. inches we're not good at math so whatever that is six, it's long five times 12 is 60 so that's five feet so add three more feet that's 36 so that would be 86 i think i don't know i just fucked that up anyway. i think it's eight feet it's eight no feet. I, don't know. I don't know listen 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 it's so long that, and a wiener's not that long so so the actual definition of sounding, the real definition of sounding, the action or pro process of measuring the depth of the sea or other body of water. So that's what they got the name from. So they're sticking this rod in there all the way. Oh, there's a rod attached to the jump rope. Maybe. I don't know. I just know like the actual, it's like a... Um, like this and then it has like a t-shape on the end but it's long and they stick it through all the way the hole and hopes and the idea is to tickle the bladder and hopefully the prostate but i've never heard of that i know it's crazy but that causes all kinds of damage if you have to stick this up your penis to get like stimulate your bladder you have problems quit sticking things up your urethra and your butt hole don't men have um like women do uh you know can't they stick a dildo up their ass just like a good old-fashioned woman i know i don't and, know why that be better and feel better okay i'm so confused well, Again, well, well. we have gone off the deep end with the sex talk <laughs> but this, this is what i think you were thinking like women or just oh uh, i got it my my point was my okay my point is so they were probably doing the sounding sticking it in the penis but they also might be having anal sex at the same time i think there's many things going on so that's why it might be more pleasurable wow. i know okay my respect for this man has really gone up then because if you can be getting fucked from behind and you're sticking a 90 inch jump rope up your urethra wow that's sincere concentration okay never mind i respect him never mind so it, never yeah mind. so urban it's 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 it's, I it's stand called, corrected it's called sounding him. or urethra play wow. oh i like urethra play but i want something to go up someone's ass i want to be an er doctor that gets all that weird stuff up people's asses and they act like they just fell on it on accident i love those stories
<laughs> Jeff, Jeff actually talked about, might have been last year, maybe you remember with Judge Lauren Lake, about a yes. guy that put 12 hard-boiled eggs up his butthole. <laughs> Why? Are you drunk? You have to be drunk. How? Oh, I just fell on this bottle of ibuprofen. <laughs> what? I mean, at least have something that has a tip. Oh, my God. Um, oh, Liz Rome. So, of all things, they talk about J uh, Doug's beautiful four-layered outfit that he still had tags on because he wanted to see what he was going to keep and what he was going to return. How you much know do we what, love though? Doug? He is it the was, most relatable chump ever. So it relatable. Was, it was a blue ball moment because I was like, surely he's posted a picture. There's no picture of the outfit. There's only the picture where he took with Liz. And I actually liked the plaid shirt. I wasn't bothered by the plaid shirt. Are you calling it plaid or madras? What does that mean, madras? I've never heard that. Madras to me, oh, how do you explain it? Checkered, madras? like checkered, checkered? Yeah, yeah. Not gingham, madras. They're all cousins. Madras, gingham. All I'm that. glad you cousins. said that. Because I was like, what did she say? Magistrate? So, Magistrate. okay, yeah. But whatever the, the shirt was, the little checkers, I thought I liked it. I thought it was, it was cute. I know. Everything else was autumn to me. The other stuff I couldn't really decide. Yeah. But I, could, I needed to see the whole ensemble. I, I did comment yeah. on my uh, post or his post or something like that. He said he was going to change clothes when he went out with Liz tonight. So a different ensemble. Oh, I would have loved to see in the corduroy pants. I'm a big fan of corduroy pants. Oh, and I think I think that would look so cute on him. Absolutely. Um, but Madden. also relatable that they didn't take a coffee picture because Liz Rome was late because she had her cell phone lost and it was in her car the whole time. So relatable. You know what's funny is I was thinking about that because I kept refreshing my phone like, why have they posted a picture? Something must be up. Anytime they post a um, pre-edited picture, you know something got flubbed up and they didn't get a, a picture for the day. Yeah. Madre. Uh, Thank you, Marty. Oh, Madras with a Z? Madras. I always said Madras. I don't Madras. say that word a whole lot, though, to be honest with you. Me neither. Um, that's a fancy word. Um, yeah, so Liz is enjoying some time away from her husband. That sounded interesting to me. They definitely didn't give her talk about her husband today or her daughter, which I didn't like the daughter talk a long time ago when it kind of got dark about the yeah custody and i think the daughter was choosing to live with the ex-husband the ex yes so that was kind of dark to me i know it's real life but i want jeff to be like light and airy i mean right. as much as jeff can be light and airy some days <laughs> yeah absolutely uh what about the the parking space am i jumping ahead too much i know I, I just was like have a drink for your dead grandma. Remember she texted me? Lie. Complete and absolute lie. Not only a lie, but a stupid lie. Like, that yeah. doesn't even make sense. Maybe you did go have a drink and chose to drive afterwards, but Shane is is a sweetie. Like, he did the first nice snow. Maybe that's, like, a tier one. Do you think and they're, then, like, texting each other, though? Did it sound like they have each other's yes. phone numbers now? That's he left, uh, with the original note, he left his phone number. Oh, gotcha. I cannot believe how I would be so livid if I came home from a trip and this is the second time that person was there, I would have had him tow that night. I know that's probably not a good thing to do. I'd be like, get that fucker out of here. Okay. And we have been to right where his apartment is, Crazy. like high top. Crowded. All that. Crowded. We've always Ubered. So we've never had to deal with parking, but you can see there's no parking. So the fact that he has this what do you call it? Coveted solo spot. Yes. It's not even the tandem one where it's like irritating. He's got oh. this really good spot. And I'm so mad. Not only it did sound like he visited his family this weekend in Washington. That made me happy. Yeah, he didn't talk about that. He was going. Yeah. Um, you know, and also he was talking about the loudness factor. There's a lot yeah. of people down there. So I think yeah. it's kind of funny that he didn't realize it was going to be so loud. But yeah, he probably might even pick that apartment for that solo spot. You know what I mean? Because oh yeah. I can't tell you how horrible it is to go grocery shopping or come some, come home sometime and it's late and you're tired, can't find fucking parking, 20 minutes circling, circling, and then you have to park far away. It fucking sucks. It sucks. I never thought about that. Do you not have a, a permanent, you don't have a spot? Oh, I do now, but I've lived in other places. Oh, where I in Huntington Beach. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like... <sighs> Come on. Oh, that would be so irritating. And my daughter, of course, in LA, she has this issue. And a lot of times the tandem parking, it was always a fucking nightmare. Somebody didn't get up. Somebody didn't wake up or whatever. Yeah. 
I would have told them the second time as well. Elka, uh, Alicia, uh, her name's Alicia. I keep calling her Elka. Alicia yes, said, absolutely. Too, Alicia. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, speaking of, if, if you haven't heard, if anyone is going to see Fortune Feimster or wants to come, uh, join us in Irvine, California. We'll be there at the January 7th. Sounds like, like it's a meet and greet. It's not. We just want to no. meet we'll other make it a fans. Meet. We're going to make it a meet and greet. Well, it's a meet and greet for us, for sure. Yes. Um, but anyway, somebody was DMing me earlier that might fly in, but she thought it was more in LA than Irvine. How far is that? Because she's about a two and a half, three hour drive away, I think she said. Well, Irvine from to LA could be anywhere between 45 minutes and an hour and 15 minutes. It really just depends on traffic. And, and well, Saturday um, night, this was Saturday, Saturday night. The show we'll, is it, we have seven o'clock tickets to January 7th. Is that what it is? Yes, I don't think it would be that bad. It's not a Monday through Friday. Um, go to work. You thing. are Kim. She's thinking about she it. She's still thinking about going. I didn't know that. How exciting! We can have a we'll reunion. I know. I know. Um, but yeah, it's not that bad. It's a Saturday night. It's not like you're dealing with people going to rush hour and stuff like that. Yeah. But I just know that, it, and obviously today is one year ago that I flew out for the Burbank show. There's so many people that end up going to shows by themselves. I and did. they just, they either don't know about Facebook groups or they don't know how to find a fan to go with. So if you don't have someone to go with, meet us there. It will be so fun. Even if you Absolutely. don't love Fortune Feimster, to see her in person I think will be so fun. She looks like a riot to do a live show, and I'm so excited. You know what? I finally watched. And tickets uh, are really reasonable, too, like $35. Yes. I finally watched Lucky Fortune. Is that what it is? The second uh, good one? Good Fortune. Oh, good Fortune. Uh, salty and Sweet or Sweet and Salty was, was better. Was. Absolutely. It is. I love so, Fortune. I love yeah. her. But I like that first one better. Salty and Sweet or whatever it's called, the, the her comedy special on Netflix that was a year ago maybe a during longer, COVID? longer? anyways maybe i do feel like it is better than a uh, good fortune also but i think it would be so fun to see her. obviously i love coming to la we're gonna go to west hollywood yes we want to go to um islands yes uh, and we'll high top so all oh, the yeah. fun places it'll be so fun absolutely anyway so dm one of us if you feel like coming um and the tickets are the good news is the tickets are either all general admission, so you be able to sit anywhere. So it's not like you have to figure out who you're going to buy your ticket next to. Right. And then the tickets I got for us are, um, they sell like a four person group. Um, and it comes out to what, $95 a person. But yeah. each person also gets a $50 food and alcohol beverage uh, voucher to use there. So it's practically free, as Jeff Lewis would say. It's practically free. Absolutely. And the $35 ticket or however, however much they have like a two drink minimum. So you have to buy drinks anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what did you think about this play that Doug went to? He posted on his Instagram. I'd never heard of it. It's seven hours long. I thought Jeff was exaggerating. He has to be. Is it really? I mean, it was part one and part two. I was going to say, I felt like he'd gone to the movie art, the movies, the theater. So one was three and one was four? Are there both three? No. For, for any of it, that's way too long. Even for, that's about equivalent to like three, three and a half plays. That's ridiculous. Nudity or not, I agree with Jeff. Just watch some Pornhub. Like, who's hard up enough to watch a play for seven hours? Well, I don't want to say Doug is hard up, but I do imagine <laughs> Doug, Doug, Doug Doug's is probably sweat, hard sweating it out in the... Uh, general admission seats looking for some dong in front of them maybe he knew someone in the show and he was like supporting them i'm not sure no i think he wanted to see dong wow that's a lot of time to just wait for some wiener to come out i don't know uh, i've I seen mean, a show i forget what it was called my friend was in it an actress and she didn't tell me there was nudity and my friend and I, when it happened, we were like, oh, why, well, hello, wieners. I forget the show. I'd have to ask her what it oh, was. Oh, wow. Anyways, yeah. And I've I was like, she goes, it. well, I didn't want to tell y'all because, you know, I just wanted you, I didn't want to ruin it. And I'm like, oh, you didn't ruin it, honey. <laughs> <laughs> She's good, Bob. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you think of Moreau? In what situation is she walking around saying like, well, I have two daddies. I don't have a mommy. 
Do you think that's uh, she, she's just looking for attention, or she's just trying to figure it out, like Jeff said? I think she's processing. Her. She's processing and just wanting to talk about it. She said it. I know he said one time they were going, or maybe it wasn't him. Maybe uh, Nanny Lisa was with her. They went to the uh, playground or wherever, and yeah. she just walked up to a bunch of kids and she was like, "I don't have a mommy. I have two daddies." <laughs> Who is it? Hi, Ann. Who is it that um? Has he ever, ha like he says, he doesn't really hang out with the gays. Hasn't he hung out with someone before, or am I thinking of Andy and Anderson Cooper? Somebody else that was a dad? A single dad, a gay dad. No. No, not at all. So mm -hmm. I just don't, even though they live in West Hollywood, I don't feel she's exposed to that. Well, she, at her private school, probably not, right? She has Shane around her all the time. And there's been many a twink that's come through Jeff's office and got fired. So I think she is around gay guys, but not like. No, I mean, gay daddies. Gay but daddies. You know crazy? Very different. A huh? long time. Right. A long time ago, somebody, not a long time ago, a year and a half ago, somebody said, um, do you hang out with Frederick? Because his kids, he that's has a boy and a girl. Maybe. Their daughter in, in Monroe has played together at the park before with the nanny. Yes. That's what I'm thinking of. Yes, but it's been a while. They need to, I, he doesn't talk about it. I don't know if they don't get along or if it's a scheduling thing, but they don't hang out as much as you'd think they would. But they've got a lot in common. I mean, even though Frederick is more real estate necessarily, right. and Jeff is more buy and sell design. I mean, I can see them hanging out. Do you think Frederick's too good looking? Because he is a looker to me. He's so I don't think he's so hot. I think he's handsome. Oh. I think it's more like a sword fight sort of thing. Oh. Like who has the biggest peenie? Like, you know what I mean? Like he gets along really well. Oh, I'm going to vote Frederick because he's super tall and has really long legs and big feet. I feel oh, they, would think they would clash. They, they probably would. They have stronger personalities, you think, Ian? That's what I'm saying. Sword fighting, that they're just like, like him and Andy get along so well because Andy, you know, is kind of like a big dick guy too big dick energy but andy and him have kind of like a teasing relationship yes. i don't feel like you could have that with frederick frederick would get upset probably oh i think his husband is so hot too i need them back on tv they i love have... that they moved to california but i loved him on new york millionaire uh listing he i love that he was what? a swedish porn star are you kidding uh-huh yeah i have to go look that up that yeah i'm sounding Oh my God. I don't know that he did hardcore. I've never looked into it, but yeah, I totally remember that. I think well, he wanted, I think when he moved to America, he wanted to be in the business. You know what I mean? So, right. But maybe was he was a porn star in Sweden, though. I don't know. He um, posted a video, it's on his Instagram, of his house with his husband and the family. It is the most beautiful, gorgeous, freshest house I've ever seen. I mean, it was. Is it new? Phenomenal. Is it a new house since he's? It was a new house, and he used the uh, uh, the theme of copper. So the kitchen's like all copper, lots of pink. It's I mean, oh, mm, it's I gorgeous. Love pink on a man. I you would think pink. like you would think pink would sound weird, and it, no. it just works. It works pink. with the copper. It's oh my so God. beautiful. Okay, it's so on beautiful. his story right now. No, no, no. It's on his Instagram. I'll try to find it and I'll post it if I okay. find. Okay, I'm gonna have to go look at it for sure. And his um, kids are beautiful. I forget their names. What are their names? I just know it's a boy and a girl. They're so pretty. It used to hold that against him at the beginning. Yeah. Ryan Serhant has really grown, grown up. up. I feel yeah. like we've watched him grow up. Like, he really has matured. Like, he's a father. He's a husband. I'm so proud of Ryan. And he's a big-ass deal nowadays. And like, he, he was kind of the small yes. fish when he started. Now he's a huge deal. He loves his family, and he's yeah. very supportive of his wife's family. Yes. I, I would be, too. My God, they practically help raise that little girl. As much yeah. as he works all the time, it's a blessing, for sure. Um, what do you think that somebody has stolen Shane's Instagram pictures and has got a profile on Grindr? I wouldn't doubt it. I'm telling you, there's all kinds of shady shit that happens on Instagram. Remember I told you about my, not Instagram, but on Grindr. My daughter, somebody stole her pictures and pretended it was a porn site. Like, yes, there's all kinds of nasty. Sh it, it's it's a compliment to Shane. Absolutely. That somebody thinks he's so hot and fresh that they want to pretend that that's who he is. But what happens when they eventually meet up? Or does the person just never like, is it just a game to be online? Like that show, uh, Catfish. That show Catfish on MTV? 
Yes. Or that is so to... weird to me that people have the time and energy and desire to do that bullshit. And then they don't even plan to meet up with them in person because they can't. It doesn't look anything like them probably. Or it's a scam and they want to try to get money out of people. Oh, so, I've like totally Doug, seen that on MTV. Like Doug They said, totally that ask for money. Somebody was catfishing Doug on Instagram and asking people for money. Wow. Oh, my God. I would be mortified. Oh, yeah, my God. Enough. Speaking of Doug, we adore him. It sounds like it's going to be a huge chump night at Megan's house. They've talked about it a few times now, December 1st. Uh, I did not hear Stu's name mentioned though. The, I only the got day to is listen. young. December so 1st me. is a while away, but. So it's December 1st. Which one is December 1st? It's Doug and. That's the one at Megan's house. And it's going to be, he said Jeff was going to be there. Shane, uh, Rick and Kelly. And then on December 15th, it's going to be probably at Doug's house. I'm assuming. Uh, Patrick yeah. and Paul, and they're going to make the Armenian spaghetti. Okay. Yeah, he didn't mention it. Oh, my gosh. People have asked Alicia for money that she's met on Plenty of Fish. Wow. I've had people offer me money on dating websites, oh. and I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> I get the cra I don't even get the crazy DMs anymore. I was posting them to fa uh, Instagram, and then I was getting in trouble by Instagram. I was getting my, I was getting, uh, you know, the community standards. Oh. The thing I got for saying that, uh, you know, Jeff wanted to strangle Stu. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason I can't start Instagram lives. Eh. Lenore the whore. Lenore the whore. Um, who was saying that, uh, oh, I think it was uh, Alyssa, uh, Alyssa saying, like, be nice to Doug in the background. Because they felt yeah, like they were that's... teasing him. Yes, but he, Jeff always gets tons of DMs, like, when he's mean to Doug. Like, stop being mean to Doug. You know, and all that stuff. I think it's all in fun. Obviously, Doug doesn't... Uh, it seems, who is saying this? Jane says, it seems like Stu and Jeff are keeping their business separate. Stu is hustling. He is. He's so cute. He is. I saw his things earlier. If, you haven't if you're not the... subscribing to him, it's yeah. four ninety nine a month. It's so cute. Like today, it's so cute. Yeah, we got a He's going to do stuff. more stuff too. Yes. I think he's got a, I think he wants to do an Instagram live. By the way, several people have reached out to me, um, to what in the beginning to wonder why he's not doing the chat thing anymore it limits him to 30 people which is so weird why would it limit you so he has trying to find and it also stops every 24 hours so oh, yeah. of us we're chatting so he's trying to think of a way to like randomly make it be 30 new people the next week you know what i mean that way mm -hmm. everyone gets a chance because he's got hundreds of people on it so yeah he might have more than that now but anyway, so that's one thing people have been DMing me about over the last oh, probably like five or six days because that and thing it's started. Only, it's only four ninety nine, and you really do get a lot of recipes. And I am not a cookie person at all. I made two that Stu has posted, and they're awesome. We're having them all week. They're healthy. They're quick. It's all good. Well, they're not only recipes. Like, you know, he talks about personal stuff. He's yes. had Jeff in one. Um, he was at Jeff's house. He shows animals. I mean, he just shows some his behind life. the scenes stuff, his life and yeah. recipes, obviously, because that is mainly his thing. The chat works because you just get this notification that a group has started. And um, I think we decided on the name, what, Stu's Crew? Mm -hmm. Stu's Crew is what we're calling like his people that follow the subscription. And uh, you just chat and he's in it a lot. But he hasn't done that in about a week because, like I said, it, it starts over every 24 to 24 hours and um, it limits him to 30 people. So most of the people can't even get on. It's kind of weird. He's yeah. going to try to work around it, but he's also going to do some Instagram lives where it's just for the subscription people. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be really, fine. that'd be fun. That'd be yeah. fun. It'd be yeah. like our very own uh, cameo. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that'd be super fun. Super fun. Um, so that'll be fun. The um, Patrick and Paul. Uh, December oh, 1st, December 15th. If you're not following uh, Doug Buden, it's, is he Doug underscore Buden? No, I, no, I think it's Doug Buden. Doug Buden. Chef Stew's crew. Yeah. Super cute. Um, what do you think about the text from Jim Thompson saying, call me after the show. We seriously need to talk about HR training. Yeah. I'm like, Jeff, you've done so many other crazy shit. He's not talking about you catcalling Alyssa. I promise you, that's not what it is. 
right? That's the mildest stuff. But don't yeah. you feel like they kind of talked about this with, um, yeah, hi, Diane. Um, don't you feel like they have, when they're in the studio, there's, there's a, like a professional thing that goes out the window because their show is kind of raunchy and they're able to ask things like that. Shout out, Chris. Hello. As, um, soon, hey, as, Diane. Go, as soon as they're in the studio, it's balls to the walls. You better, you better be ready because who but knows HR what's going can't, They can't get in trouble for HR stuff in the studio, right? Because it's kind of part of the show. Don't they have no, like creative? I would think you could. Like, I can't, like, that's what's so crazy about Howard Stern. He's calmed down. I mean, so he... they do crazy stuff. Not Howard anymore, Stern. though, right? He doesn't well, because dude won't go back in the studio. He's but not saying now that he's getting old. I believe, like, if you are sexually harassing an employee of Sirius, then, yeah, I think they would be on it. I don't think he was, but I feel like he's done so many other things that you, <laughs> it, it's not because you said Alyssa was hot. I do feel like he does need to get this HR training done. I just don't feel like Jim Thompson would be the one to be reaching out to him about that. I feel like someone in HR should reach out to him, not Jim Thompson. I think HR has consistently reached out to Jeff and Jeff ignores it. So now Jim, sorry, I was like, is like on his ass. Plus I had to take that training as teachers. It's part of our mandated training, the sexual harassment, child abuse, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It is long and it's exactly like Jameson said. You walk into a bar and you see blah, 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 blah. What should you do? So, yeah. Yeah. Alyssa is hot. Alyssa is hot. Oh, who said Alyssa's hot? She is. Chris. And I agree. Howard is so tame now. My husband got me uh, Sirius XM in my car about five years ago as a surprise because he knows I love Howard Stern. And um, shout out, husband. I don't. Yes. And I don't even listen to Howard Stern anymore. It's on Radio Andy all the time. Like Howard yeah. Stern is so lame. He got, he got he got gross. I mean, just dumb gross. But now with COVID, it's just lame. You're right. It's so lame. I'm just uh, over the, it. the nickname is Shelly. So he does an, he changes everyone's name. So I won't say what Jim is, but you can imagine it rhymes with Shelly. I think he's Jim with. Thompson. He's he's Jim. No, he's Tim Johnson in real life. He calls him Jim Thompson. Yes, and Smelly is really Kelly. I thought he was Shell. I think she's Shelly. Oh, maybe Shelly then. Okay, Shelly. Yeah. Who knows? They're all a fake name. They're all being <laughs> tortured by Jeff. Oh, Dr. Laura is on Sirius. I literally don't know. In I don't use Sirius for anything else. I really don't. Dr. Lore, I used to listen to her when I wanted to get mad at myself. I, she's really cruel to people. She like the the stuff that she says to people. Is she the sex lady? No, I'm thinking no. the old lady. Oh, what's her name? She did a great documentary. Yes. Um, but I, Dr. Laura is the mean one. Like if women call up that are like in toxic or abusive relationships, she's like, well, what's your problem? You need to get out. Oh. She's not very, she's not very kind or sensitive. Yeah. Every time I went to, because so Chris has a story. I don't know if he's ever going to share that with us, but um, he said every time I went to series, everyone was super hot. Oh yeah, Doctor Ruth Westheimer. That's right. Because for I'm all of our Houston it, friends, we have a big street in Houston called Westheimer. So Doctor Ruth Westheimer. That's exactly what it is. If you have not seen the documentary with Doctor Ruth, I, I, it's, it's really good. It's, it's really old, good. but it is good. It is good. She would have so much respect for that little lady. She's like yeah. a tiny little. Put, he, put, your, put her in my pocket. Oh, my God. I love her. I mean, hearing her talk about masturbating, and she's like 75 years old. She probably, is she dead now? No, I think she's still alive. Oh, wow. Anyways. Dr. Laura didn't know her mother was dead for two weeks. Oh, <laughs> like there's no relationship between them? Probably not. Diane, I don't remember. I would just type in like Google. So she needs to counsel herself on having a mother and daughter relationship. Or maybe it was really bad and she just knew to cut it off. Or, yeah. I was going to say, uh, Diane, go on Google, uh, put in Dr. Ruth documentary. I don't remember the name. Yeah, no, I think she means like Netflix or is it Hulu. It'll tell you on there. Yeah, if you watch. just Google it, it will tell you where stuff yeah. is. Well, <sighs> do you have anything else? Or do you want to chat music? Um, no, it was I, oldie stuff again. It was. We had Pump up the jam, Technotronic, and his favorite, Salt and Pepper. Ah, push it. Can I tell you? 
yeah. I think I've said this before. Eighth grade year was my shining star year. Not only did I win the dance contest to push it like salt and pepper, I also was voted most funny as an eighth grade. Oh, you peaked. Congratulations. <laughs> eighth grade. Let me think. What I think of me in eighth grade was super blonde hair. Of course, I wasn't coloring. It was just super blonde. Yes. I think in seventh grade, I had like the blue eyeshadow. I think by eighth grade, I went to the pink eyeshadow. Oh. That's, and then I think of this um, overalls outfit I had that was like a skirt, a mini skirt, but then it was like overalls with a shirt underneath it. Does that sound like the, the mm -hmm. time frame? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, salt and pepper is a treasure a treasure that I will keep close to my heart for the rest of my life. Salt and Pepper story. So Salt and Pepper was part of the mixtape tour this past summer that some friends and I went to. Yes. Like new kids on the block. And one of them was sick. It was like Rick Astley, new kids on the block. Oh my God. Uh, Debbie Gibson. Who? Debbie. No, Gibson. that would have been great. Tiffany on encore on. It's three African American women. Vogue. In Vogue. In Vogue. In Vogue and Salt and Pepper. They were all there and amazing. But Salt and Pepper, I think it was Pepper was out. She was sick. Anyways, it was still fun. We sang and danced to every single song. It was so oh, yeah. good. Oh, Alicia went to that in Dallas. Yeah, I went to the Houston one. Yeah, I love it. Anyways. The cast really? of the Low Deck Adventure is smoking hot. I don't watch that one. Isn't that the one where some of the housewives are going to be on, like Heather Gay? I don't know, but it's, it's, I, I listened to the Mediterranean, I watched the Mediter Mediterranean one because of um, Reality Checked. Adventure is where they're like stuck in a port and they do all this like crazy rope swinging bullshit. <laughs> what a man, what a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Mighty, mighty Thank good you. man. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, Chum Pats, for joining us. We try to stick. Look, it's 837, 637 your time. We're like, that's like our time, 37 minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyways, tomorrow is a wet Wednesday with Brandy and Julie. So listen in and thank you all for joining us. Remind us Thursday. I can't remember Thursday. Oh, shit. Friday is Paul and Patrick. Thursday is. Thursday, Tracy Tudor and Megan. Oh, I Very hope Megan's good. so hot and so skinny and young and fresh. Be careful in that snow, Diana. We'll see you guys later. Bye, everyone. Bye. Boop. Boopity boop.